Hi, uh, I'm Clayton Wick. Uh, I'm a failing stand-up comedian at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're asking me, Gosh, you're the Egoxin, right? Yeah. You're mine. <laughs> yeah. Game on. And, um, I guess what I like about Doctor Who is that when it comes down to it, the show's core message has always been that people are worth it. And I like that. I think it's an important message that a lot more shows should have, honestly. Amen. Amen. That's right. That was a lot deeper than mine. Yes. <laughs> and I am. I am the, the host of this insanity. And actually, I think today isn't going to be too insane. Um, Audience, it's up to you to bring the insanity to <laughs> <laughs> right. um, <Huzzah>! um, <laughs> um, I am Davey Beauchamp. I am an author, an anthologist, an editor, a librarian, a podcaster. I'm a little of everything. A man about town. Jack of all trades. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I'm not really going to say a while like Doctor Who because. I brought this insanity together, and if that doesn't doesn't say why I like who and what I think so amazing about you, I don't think I can actually give it words. Who's your daddy? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Okay, so move along. Too late to change. <laughs> Yes, our official mascot, made by Angela, who is not here with us today. Call me what you call me when we're alone. Derpy. <laughs> I don't know, it wouldn't have been as good a, good a moment. But we still love you. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, I got it. Neil Gaiman's episode, sexy. The oh, amazing yeah. oh, Neil yeah. Gaiman episode. So, <laughs> let's, let's talk. So, actually, I, I want to get this out of the way, because I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. Um, who is your first doctor, and who is your favorite doctor? And we're, we're not going to break it down from New Who to Classic Who all together. I'm kind of curious about that. Especially since we have so many new people on the panel, I always like to I like to let people know, you know, that you don't all have to like Tom Baker to like Doctor Who. That's true. Um, but Tom Baker is my first doctor. That yeah. was my first experience with was with Tom Baker, and then go, discovering VHS tapes when I finally got old enough to have a part time job and I could get older episodes, but my favorite doctor today is the, is the current Dr. Matt Smith. He is so zany and madcap, but there's something about his personality that comes through that I just connect with yeah. him more than any of the previous doctors. I really do empathize with him, I have no idea why. Well, I'll say this about, about Smith, and I think I've said it before, he's the first of the current doctors that sold me he was a doctor in his first episode. Um, I thought he was incredible through the entire thing, but when they get down to the, the, the last like 10, 15 minutes on the rooftop. Um, the panoramic of all the previous Exactly. Hours. I mean, when, when he goes through his little speech and he, you know, they do the panor and he walks through and says, I'm the doctor, now run. He was a doctor. Like, with Tennant, his, his first episode of The Christmas didn't sell me. Uncle Sam didn't sell me. But, you know, he really brought something to the role right away from the beginning that just sold me uh, as him being the doctor. Matt Smith has a kind of a subtlety about his performance. Like David Tennant is very I mean he he brought that kind of zany, you know, well, I mean super he, fast talking craziness. Well, he walked but. into his, his his interview for the role and said, What am I gonna be wearing? I mean I mean he had the balls to say that, what am I gonna be wearing as my part of the doctor? Which I totally digressed everything with asking <laughs> uh, uh, first doctor favorite doctor, and we'll get to you, Drew. Uh, my first doctor was that's what it played. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is good for, I guess, something, but not for getting uh, a lot of Doctor Who. Um, and as far as favorite Doctor, and I'm really not trying to be cheesy on this, but um, whichever one I'm watching at the time. Um, I'm, I'm going back, I started with episode one, and uh, I've spent the last five months watching them in order. And um, wait, does that mean there are times you enjoy Colin Baker? I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> we just started Tom Baker. We were just I, I, I started Tom Baker uh, last week. I am now a season and a half into Tom Baker. I haven't seen my wife in four days. Um, I'm okay with that. No, I'm just. Um, but uh, but I, I. It's not necessarily just the Doctor the show and everything it encompasses, as we have said in our introductions. And I, I just love the show. I love the show, and of course, you know, the Doctor is a huge, obviously is a huge part of that. But um, 
really I'm just happy to have something like that in front of me. Yeah. Okay. What was the first episode we watched that you showed me? Stevie's oh. the one who actually introduced me to Doctor Who. So I am here, like he's the expert, and I'm like the little junior Padawan who's still learning about everything. Um, it, knowing myself, it was probably it was was it Blink? That tends to be the first episode I showed most people. It was either Blink or a Girl in the Fireplace. Uh, it was definitely man. a tenant episode. Good man. <laughs> oh, trust me, I, I I know how to introduce people to Doctor Who. Yeah, he got here. Well, no, I would okay, I would argue that point, but I, not that I know how you introduce. Yeah. Love too, but that is a point of contention. How do you introduce someone new? Yeah. What do you show them? Yeah, and especially honestly, now it's really hard because that first Matt Smith episode, I re or even the Van Gogh episode. Yes. I mean, they've added some, and of course we're speaking about pretty much all Moffat episodes here. <laughs> anyway, um, um, it's it's really you know it, it, it I think it's gotten tougher. But I would never introduce anybody. I wouldn't introduce anybody to Classic Who unless I knew they liked that cheesiness. I would start them off on something that's new who, and it, right now it would have to be either a Tennant or a Smith because I would not show anybody anything else. So, not to start them with. Yeah. I disagree with you. Uh, if you show somebody from the classic Doctor Who episode, tell me what's the fault in the um, keeper of profit. Um, most people that are modern TV viewers aren't huge fans of the happiness that is who. Um, and that's the reason why I would I start them off on the new stuff, and usually if I'm going to show them a classic episode, I usually show them an early child first, so they see where it started, and they can also see, they that's know, and they also know where it's going. I think I think I showed you that's the girl in the fireplace yeah. or um, Blink, and then I showed you an early child because that's how I like to do things. Because I want to show them the history of who, where it, where it started, the day after the Kennedy assassination, to where it is today. Clayton? Favorite doctor? Favorite doctor and first doctor? Um, my first doctor was actually Matt Smith. And uh, he's still one of my favorites. I, it's really hard to choose. I really like Smith. Some days I really like Tennant. And I'm, I'm a big Trouton fan. I mean, Trouton almost made the two doctors vaguely watchable, which is a feat in itself. <laughs> Nothing makes the two doctors watchable. But he almost did. <laughs> <laughs> I, really did. I wish I had alcohol when you made me watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, which is worse? Unearthly, or no, um, the two doctors or the Arizona Project? Or Arizona Solution? The two doctors. No, it, it's just I. <laughs> <laughs> I really I really give me something to look forward to. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 it's gonna I, be okay. It's gonna be okay. I can't <laughs> use my words when I talk about it. <laughs> I, I just turn different colors and shake my fist and throw things. Yes. Oh, well, I'll at least answer this this question. Um, my first doctor. I don't know who my first doctor was. I'm actually one of the lucky few that grew up watching Doctor Who from the earliest of age. So I've always known Doctor Who, which I. I I, I take it as a point of pride, um, and I, I count myself extremely lucky. Um, but I will, I will definitely say my favorite doctor uh, is Peter Davidson. Because um, just like in Time Crash, um, he was my doctor. Um, he was the one that I really connected with. I mean, I liked Baker, he was funny, he was goofy. But then there was just something about Peter Davidson that just was magical. I mean, he was, he was my doctor. I mean, the, the cricket bat, the trainers, when he first appeared, and, we mean the regeneration. It was just so epic, so just amazing. I mean, he's he's my doctor, hands down. Uh, he he will and forever will be my my favorite doctor. Though I will say Smith comes in a close second to that. He's wonderful. He is. Um, I mean, I was really worried when they cast somebody so young with a companion so young, but they had promised us that he would be young, but an old man in a young body. Maybe that's it. He has an old soul about him. Yeah. Because the doctors have been getting progressively younger, and I, I was worried about it too. That I wouldn't be, you know, being um, nearly the wrong size forty, would I yeah. be able to connect to him, him being so young? But um, there's just something about him. He, Smith makes me feel like there's a chance one day I could be a doctor or I could be a human. <laughs> it's something I, I associate with him. I don't know what it is. One I, day I can be a doctor. I can grow up and be a doctor one day. <laughs> or a master. Or a master. That's right. <laughs> I am the devil person. You, you are. You're queen of the devil people. Yeah, and I'm the master of the yeah, double people. I 
Come in the room, we'll explain yes. it later. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, who news? Because there's some some interesting stuff that's happening. This just in. Yeah, yeah, pretty much just us in, because I've actually been keeping up to date because I like when I do these panels that, you know, fill people in. Um, we start, the, like I said, the new season starts filming on the 20th of this month. Um, opposed to what anybody says, we are getting a full season this season on top of an expanded season for the 50th. Um, I do have a sneaking suspicion that they're going to be filming these back to back because I think it's going to lead one right into another. Um, but everybody's pretty much heard that we're about to lose our two companions. Um, and it, we're just not losing them. Uh, the big thing they've been saying is it's going to be a very sad loss. Oh, no. Um, Actual loss? Or we don't know. <laughs> um, Happy tears? That's, from what I'm reading and from what I'm understanding and what I'm hearing, they will not be happy tears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, but also, this is, not I mean, there is a I mean, really good chance that one, if not both, <laughs> will die. Again. Yeah. yeah. Is it Rory? <laughs> <laughs> we still have this Rory, so. I mean, but honestly, we don't know. Or the other thing I've been thinking, if they are going to have a sad farewell, one thing I was thinking, let them see River die. Let them see how she dies. Oh, I mean, that's messed up. But yeah. if, I mean, honestly, I think if Amy asks, I want to know what happens to River, I don't see the doctor saying no. Don't we kind of already know what happens to River? We no. do. Amy doesn't. Rory doesn't. And River doesn't, so. Yeah. Exactly. Spoilers. So, I mean, I, I mean, it's a real possibility. Because honestly, River. There isn't too much more that you do with River. There are only about two more scenes that we have not seen played out. One where the doctor tells her her name because she can, she's part Dalek, she's part time, so she can actually pronounce the language. Because they've said in Classic Who that humans cannot pronounce or understand Galfrainies, I guess is how you would say it. Galfrainies, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we haven't seen the passing of the screwdriver. Um, and I think the passing of screwdriver won't happen until the 50th, because I think that'd be a touchy way of saying farewell to the character, totally. But there isn't too much because they're going opposite directions. Well, it's nice it's the only thing the doctor knows that River does, basically. It's exactly. Not her story ends. Yeah. Which, technically, in fun space, it's assuming those of you who have actually seen that first introduction to River Song, she doesn't technically die. So there's a and, that. And also, you know, we still have the Ganger flesh. The doctor did say that his version of his version of the Ganger is different, and that he can survive this. Who is not to say they can't download River in the Time Lord Ganger body and not, uh, you know, bring her back somehow, if they wanted to. I mean, there's definitely being a writer myself. That is definitely an app that they've left, where they could take her out of the machine, put her in a Ganger-like body. Um, if they were to actually witness her death, that would tie into something that Maury said very early on. That the doctor is so dangerous because he makes people want to live up to his standards. Yeah. And if they were to actually see River die because of the doctor, that would just be a confirmation of what Maury had said earlier. Yeah. But of course, you know, she chose she chose that fate. And she handcuffed the doctor to that fight. Because I mean this also I mean I would like to see see that instead of them killing a companion again, but they, I mean, they have killed numerous companions in the past. So I mean, it, it's not without saying that, that that can't be what happens here, that I don't think they would kill Rory, because I mean, I think that'd be cliche. I think the person that would die would be Amy in this, if, if that was a possibility. They have it coming to them if they die, and I know this sounds awful, but they, <laughs> you hear me out, they deserved it. Not only the Rory died, exactly. Rory dies like every third episode, but <laughs> Rory had the opportunity twice now. They walked away and they had a clean slate and they, they knew they were on a clock if they stood with the doctor. Every episode he almost kills them and they're always like, come and save me, I'm falling. But twice now he set them up in a house, left them alone, they had the career, and he walked away and twice they came back. I'm like, come on, you're really pushing fate here. So if they die, but let's just leave. Didn't he come back to them? Yeah. Yeah, it was well, this episode. Yeah. So. He did, but they didn't have to go. He can come and visit, and you don't have to get caught 
Well, like I said, I mean, I think we're getting about maybe three at most four episodes with them. Yeah. But um. You intimated that that was going to be a, a kind of an earlier mid season. Yeah. But though we are getting rumors about who the new companion's going to be, um, we actually have some odds um, of various companions. I actually have the pictures here, which I'll pass around. Um, our, and I'll pass around the panelists to see what you guys think. Our first one is, is Miranda Hart. Uh, she is a comedian, um, older later, I'm going to guess maybe late 40s, early 50s. Um, I have a real feeling that she was actually offered the job at one point. She had to turn it down, and there's a chance she's been offered it again um, with this new opening. Um, I'll pass it down here and just, you know, I get a real Donna Noble sort of vibe off of this actress. Because um, she is a comedian, she can pull off the comedic stuff. Um, and I, I, I've seen what her. would you possibly be doing in your career that you would turn down being our Doctor Who? <laughs> I, I think she was already previously committed. Contractual obligation. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, you, if you want to pass it around up there. Next we have, um, and she's she's sort of like one that they're saying is is somebody they would really like. The per, the next person, um, let's see who we got here. Is, it has four to one odds of, as being the new companion. Is I'm sorry. What was, what was her? What was her odds? Uh, no, she's like the one they want. Oh, okay. Um, this one is four to one. Her name's Jessica Brown. Findaley, I think is her name. Um, she's okay. Nothing stands out. Yeah. Oh, ah. that was a little cool. She's cute again. Um, yes. Next one we have. Is um, Lily Cole? Oh my God! Her, her odds are six to one. I want Lily Cole. I I would love Lily Cole, and we're gonna pass this around. Um, to me, she looks very alien. She looks very much like Nissa. She looks very photoshopped. I, yeah, I mean, she's actually like a model. Um, yeah. She was picked because she has these very weird features. But if anyone's seen the Imaginary of Dr. Parnassus, that was yes. her first acting role, and she was just. Well, I would I would really like her. Because uh, honestly, she was in this last season. That's right. Yeah. Was, she? It would yeah. stick to tradition. Which is coming in early yeah. on and, and then showing back up. Yeah. Was, she, was she in the pirate back. episode? She was. Yeah. She was the um, Sorry. 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 Yeah, because we had Amy Pond, Terry Gilly, or Karen Gillian in the Pirates of Pompeii. We had Martha Jones in an earlier episode. The actress that played Martha Jones. In Torchwood, right? Uh -huh. Or was it the Cyberman episode? Uh, it was it was uh, the go uh, where they were coming the ghosts were from this rose. Right, gotcha. um, next one we have her odds are ten to one. Daisy Lowell. Oh. Okay. And there, I, I, there's something about her I like. <laughs> <laughs> well, judging just by their appearances. <laughs> exactly. This panel got talent show. This is like, this is like <laughs> Doctor Who companions. So, are, 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 are we just getting just getting women? As, as, as no men so far. No men so uh, far. I'm disappointed that Billy Connolly is not on this list. Um, well, Billy is has a new job. I know he's gonna be. In he's the gonna Hobbit, be in the but, Hobbit. But still, come on, Billy Connolly as a companion. And then we have Chelsea. Awesome. <laughs> I want to Billy Connolly. Billy. Uh, most uh, what was it? He was the uh, Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints, the father yes. of Boondock Saints. Um, I hate that that's the reference I have to make. Uh, I can't say the the, 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 the masters. Uh, the voice of McSquidgy in some movie yeah, that seems a squirrel. Um, Head of the class is one of the first places I was exposed to him. Yeah. After the dude from uh, KRP in Cincinnati left, Dr. Oh, Fever. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right. Wow. Plural. Really? Yeah. Was it head of the class? Yeah, he was the first teacher, and then Billy Connolly took in and finished off the show. Huh. And that's the other one. Uh, I mean, yeah. No. If your first comment is she looks like Snooky, then I gotta say pass. <laughs> I don't know who Snooky is. But. Well, my thing is, it's like, scary spice. There, scary spice. there were some scary saucy photos, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, my favorite is Lily Cole. I really hope she's the one that they pick. Because, I, really cool. and honestly, I would like to see a non-human companion, finally. It's been forever. Yeah. I would like to see an alien, or somebody out, out of time. Out of time. Absolutely. Because they do say, this is actually directly, directly from Moffat, um, the doctor is going to meet someone very new in a very in the very last place he could ever expect, and I'm guessing the TARDIS will pull the library. That's what I was thinking. That very thing in the, in the library. I'm hoping. I so, mean, so wait, wait, the, the pull the library. Yes. So then, then the siren got pulled into the TARDIS oh, from the Curse of Black Spot. Yeah. She's in a reflective surface. She's That's trapped right. in the TARDIS now, out of time. 
and uh, you're welcome. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's how we write fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Since she doesn't speak the entire time, um, it would, it's an Emily want to play off. Did you want to say something? Uh, have you met any of the actors from the Doctor Who series? Oh yeah, I've met quite a few of them. Uh, which one have you met? Uh, uh, Davison, uh, McCoy, uh, Sophie Aldrin, um, uh, dude who played the second, uh, the second actor's companion, I'm drawing a blank. Um, 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 the, the Jamie, Jamie oh, the guy who played Jamie, Frasier. and yeah, Fraser Hines, and a, and a bunch of others. Um, and so far, they've all been wonderful, wonderful people. I met Patrick Troutman, John Percy, uh, Peter Davidson, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, uh, Louise Jameson, Nicholas Courtney, Cherry Nation. Uh, Why is it easy? <laughs> and also, to um, uh, John Levine, Sergeant Benton. And you, did you have the same experience? Were they all really nice? Uh, unfortunately, I was at the convention uh, with Patrick Tom passed away. Uh, I met him, oh my God. met him that Friday, got his autograph, talked to him. He, he had a very good love for his uh, work with his actor, Frazier Hines. He went to his bed that night, died in his sleep, and called him a heart attack. And you know the weird thing about, about that? There was a chance that Stellar Con was going to have him the same weekend. Oh. It, he, but they went and ended up going with the, the, the guy from Buck Rogers, the guy who played Hawk. So, I mean, there was a chance that, you know, he would have been at Stellar. Yeah. Because I've met people that were running that Stellar, and that they, those were the two people that they usually had a big, big media guest, and it was, it was torn between the two. Wow. That's great. And uh, yeah. as far as, and like, I've also met Anthony Angley, the master. Uh, me and Eddie were pen friends for many years before he had, uh, he died of cancer. Um, yeah, because um, pulling this up, he's a, a late, another thing that Moffat just said, I'm writing that now, the big Rory and Amy heartbreak, heartbreaking finale. It will be quite heartbreaking. I think you will be trouble, you'll be in trouble watching it. Thanks, Moffat. Yes. <laughs> well, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to die. Anytime the characters are that beloved, um, and they are, do you really think Moffat is going to pass up this golden opportunity to mess with us all one last time? He has to kill them, because history has shown us if you leave them alone, they will come running back to the doctor. They can't be taught. Oh my god, you're just like, <laughs> what you got? you're so ruthless. <laughs> you're like, no, just put them, put them down, or they're going to keep coming why, back like strays. I would like to see him killed for no other reason. As an author, and Davy may agree with me with this, the character of the doctor, he cannot grow unless there is pain and struggling. A character can't develop. He can't learn from his mistakes. Yeah, definitely. Look at what happened with Adric. Okay. Exactly. I mean, because I mean, Nissa and Tegan begged the Doctor to go back mm -hmm. just minutes before the explosion to save him, and you can see the pain of the Doctor's face. I can't do that. Sarah Jane still waiting in that terrible little series they had with her. She was still waiting in her house for the Doctor to maybe one day kind of just walk by her window. It's, it's tragic, but there has to be pain and and hurt and heart crushing you know get your nose you have your heart pulled out through your nose for a character to develop there has to be pain and the doctor has to be taught and the only way to do that is to kill Amy or Rory to teach him from the stage. Very sad book. I read historical nonfiction reference. <laughs> <laughs> but people die in history. Oh so much. <laughs> she, she only introduces and, you to characters that she's gonna kill. And I and honestly I mean they've been killing companions since the very first doctor. Yeah. I mean it's nothing new. I mean and because there is so much love for these characters, because honestly, I think it was a cop out not killing Donna. I think it would actually be worse for the Doctor if they're alive and well and just want absolutely nothing to do with it. Which, I mean, the best way to do that is show them Rupert's death. Exactly. He would want nothing to do with them. Um, so, what do you want to see next season? I want to see the actress who played uh, the TARDIS from the Doctor's Wife, I want to see her get uploaded into that artificial flesh and her to become the new companion. Because she could have the TARDIS and have the TARDIS as a companion for a little while. That would, that would be better than having Storm again. No. That's what I want for <laughs> double, double TARDIS. I have the TARDIS. No, I just, I, you, we've had our moment. I, we can't do that again. Though, the, the, what it might see, Neil write something for the 50th. But I mean, I mean, what else? I mean, it's so hard to guess what we're going to see next season because I think I know I'm having trouble. I want to, I'm ready for the fiftieth. 
Because I think the entire build up for next season is going to be him getting him to the plains of wherever where he, where he has to answer the question. Yeah. I think that's what next season is going to be building. Totally laid that groundwork for the last episode. Yeah, but I think that's what the build up is going to be because I think that's going to be the kicker for the 50th. And Moffat will surprise me if he decides to do any of that stuff sooner. But with Moffat, he very well could. Because you can't second guess this man. I mean, the man is absolutely a brilliant storyteller. It is. So, what, I mean, just throw out, what, I mean, what do you want to see next season before we start talking about the 50th? I, you know, I, I'd like to see the Doctor companionless um, in, in Adventures. I actually, I liked the way the, the season ended, not necessarily with the, the Christmas special, but the actual season, season ended with him kind of doing his thing on his own. And, and you might know this more than I, but how many episodes do we see the Doctor without a companion? Um, that'd be a thousand. Um, well, I mean, we, we see it from time to time, um, but I mean, he has a habit of picking somebody up, at least in, in the episode, to pal around with. Well, you have to have that connect with the audience, where the audience yeah. isn't being a companion. That was the, the whole point of having it for the first part. I mean, if you watch the, the Hartnell episodes, the show almost seems more about uh, Ian and Barbara than it is about the Doctor. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're, you are the companion, so again, here's this buddy old guy. But I'd like to see him without a, uh, well, and I think it'd be very interesting to see what that di dynamic. Historic, speaking from a mythological point of view, the hero has to have a companion, because if he doesn't have someone to be brave for, there's no point in him going out and being brave. If Hercules had one of, all, all of them, that all the great heroes in history have had companions. What, is the doctor a hero? Yes, I'm not Are you sure? There's all kinds of heroes. Okay, he's a protagonist, and the protagonist needs to have someone he can tell exposition to. I, mean, well, uh, I think it'd be interesting just because, like, I mean, the whole idea of the Doctor constantly having somebody around is essentially how incredibly lonely he yeah. is. Yeah, well, uh, and you could, you could really kind of see, you know, him, him minus companions, just the Doctor by himself, alone in the universe, you know, trying to, well, to make his own way. And the reason why I say, is, is he a hero or not, is because there are very few characters, especially hero characters, that I think can stand on their own. Because really, what makes a hero, a hero interesting? It's their villains. Because the villains don't play by any rules. And I think one of, the, one of the best things about the Doctor is, he's a hero, but he doesn't play by any rules. What was his quote from the uh, he does have rules. episode? No, he doesn't. He never used a weapon. Oh, that's unfortunately that, not true. That's <laughs> unfortunately not true. Yeah. I think, oh, classic who all the time. Well, that's classic that's like a oh, oh, oh. Chris, that's like Pokemon. Chris 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 invasion. Invasion. He used the sword and he used the, uh, yeah. the fruit. He didn't kill anyone with it, he defended with it. He killed someone with the fruit. Yeah, I'm just a man girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have every episode. But I mean, he, he is pretty, like, not into killing people. Well, he's not a mass murderer. Like no, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, he's a mass murderer. <laughs> he just won't kill like one person because yeah. no, the, the spider queen. The spider queen said he'll he'll wipe out a race. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> dialects, 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 Cybermen, yeah. Cybermen, yeah. Uh, spider queen. Yeah, yeah. but he's, I, it, it he's rarely does he like to kill one person. He's a genocide. One. Well, it's, yeah, a, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's the whole difference between like it's hard to imagine what it is to kill six million people, but. Oh, oh wait, and don't forget, and we'll also don't forget about it. You know, he just willy nilly rewrites time whenever he feels like it. Yeah, he did it to his own granddaughter. Oh, yes. Um, and yeah, and so uh, we were talking about this earlier. I agree, I would love, I've always wanted to see something happen with Susan, so I, I think that would be very cool. But like I said, let's just let's forget next season, because who cares about next season? <laughs> wait, wait. Let's have what? I do have an idea. The new annual tradition for Doctor Who should be a companion punching him. <laughs> no, no, not Hitler. Hitler's been done. But if we could go through Mussolini, uh, Mussolini, no, Cannibal, no, 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 no. <laughs> Dracula. <laughs> um, but no, one thing I, I, mean, I Dracula would be kind of awesome. They need to do like a vampire. Vampire. Blood Tempest. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I will say this. Sorry, vampirologist. Oh, sorry. Oh, I miss I miss the Sapesh. I'm sorry. I would like to see a Doctor Light episode again. I miss those. Because yes. I think some of those are classic. And I mean it's yeah. time for us to have one again. I wouldn't mind seeing that next season. Because like the 50th anniversary, I want all doctor all the time. Um, <laughs> but okay, but for me, I mean, how how will I see the 50th kicking off if Moffat doesn't bamboozle us, which he's very good at. But I really would like to see you know when he's on the planes and where he has to speak his name, you know, tell the truth about who he is. 
I would like the person that asked that question, I mean, a lot of people are assuming it's going to be River. I would love for it to be Susan. Oh, well, I mean, I, I've said it a half dozen times at every single con. Uh, well, we, okay, I will say this about Jenny. Moffat wanted Jenny not to die. Originally, Jenny died in that episode. It was Moffat that saved her. Davies wanted her dead. Moffat said, you can't kill her, I want her. And I think the only reason why we haven't seen her yet is because the courtship with Tennant, the pregnancy, the marriage, I don't think she's been, hasn't been available to actually particip participate. But I think that's gonna change either next season or the 50th. But honestly, I don't see her asking the question. She has no reason to. It has to be a character that has a reason to. Um, the one person that has the biggest reason because she got screwed by the doctor, his own granddaughter, Susan. Is everyone familiar with what happened with Susan? Yeah, fine. Okay. I'm not. Okay, okay. I'll let you. I'll let you uh, okay, so um, ooh, it's season, season two, I believe, and I don't have the episode guide in front of me. Um, dog Invasion of Earth. Dog Invasion of Earth. Yeah. They they go to the future of Earth. The dogs have taken over the planet. Humanity's essentially been enslaved. They lead a revolution. Um, Susan meets a boy. Uh, they fall in love in the way that you can in the, I guess, in the mid sixties. Um, and then the doctor essentially locks her up. The TARDIS tells her that she's better off there and leaves. And he also gives the greatest speech of all time. Yes, yes. Which then carries over into the five doctors because when they did the five doctors, Hartnell was already dead. But they took this wonderful speech that he gives about the parting of him and Susan uh, at the very beginning of the episode. I should go back. Yes, I should go back. Until then, let there be no tears, yeah. no regrets, no sighs. Go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. Yes, it's, yeah. really, it's a great speech. But then, yes, but then, um, time and time again, the, the doc, because actually, I had some fans of mine actually bring me back, the, the, before it was released from the States, the dialect companion book. And it actually goes through how the doctor has gone back in time, which I, didn't, which I think it was a, a Baker episode, where he basically destroys the dialects before that even happened, rewriting the entire timeline, basically making whatever happened to Susan not happen, so we don't actually know what has happened to Susan at this point. Um, she's like, the, I, I think, one of the greatest mysteries of who. If they're going to do that, and I would love to see it, having watched that, but if they're going to do that, how do you build up to that point for audiences who are not familiar with Susan, well, who have not watched those first couple well, they, they, well, they've started. I mean, just the fact that Moffat's, you know, in the very first Moffat episode, really, I mean, when he took over, showing the old doctors. Mm. Then in the Van Gogh episode, where, you know, he gets zapped by that device, you see the first doctor, you see the second doctor. Because, I mean, he's really trying to show that there's this history. Good man goes to war. The crib. The crib. You know, the crib is, yeah, cribs are um, And there's been a, a real recurring theme in Moffat's run about family, about the past. Whenever they mention or talk about the doctor's family, he quickly changes the subject every time. Oh, yeah. Um, and honestly, we have an entire season to build up to Susan. That's true. That is true. I mean, yeah, I just I would. It, we have fourteen episodes to build up to Susan coming back. Susan, uh, is Susan Rivers' daughter? No, Susan is the Doctor's actual granddaughter. If you watch the very first episode of the Doctor of an Unearthly Child, she is in fact the Unearthly Child, and it's because of Susan essentially. I think it's stuck on Earth. She wants to go to school for a little bit. Yeah. Her teachers are wondering what's going on with this strange girl who is incredibly intelligent for her age, um, and but yet doesn't understand certain basic things. So because she, synopsis, but uh, yeah, because she actually um, sees time differently because she's experienced time. So stuff they haven't proven yet, or doesn't, or they don't know about yet, she spouts off and is wrong, but will eventually be right. Yeah, so the last episode. It's yeah. Kind of awkward. It's, yeah, and it, 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 I highly recommend watching the episode again. And, it, and as David said before, it really shows a history of it. I love the fact that there's been almost, but let's face it, 50 years of history with Doctor Who, so much to pull from. Uh, and if you're a fan of the new Who stuff, when you go back and watch the old Who, you're going to find little nods that these yeah. writers that have put in that seem to just go along with the storyline, but it really is a nod to these earlier episodes, because yeah. there is. I mean, it's a show about 
in many ways history, because uh, that's what it was designed for. It was supposed to be an educational program. Yeah. It was travel with this zany old man in his magic box yeah. and um, yeah. and learn about history in a way that you young kids with your music and your rock and roll <laughs> uh, will appreciate. You know, it's like sure we might not. You don't feel like you're being taught, but you're being taught. You know, you ever, yeah. if you ever teach classes, you really have to trick education a lot of times. Yeah. And that was what they designed for. And about three episodes in, they went, nah. I don't, well, I mean, after the, after the second, I mean, it's hard to say that, you know, the unearthly child and that caveman travesty that occurred after it are one story, but they're considered one story. Mm -hmm. um, because with the second story, which honestly, I never realized they had come in so early, it was the second story that brought us to dialects. Yeah. Um, and? Kills the dollars. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, here they are, they're dead. Oh wait, people like those. Well damn, okay. Um, let's yeah. make a movie. Okay. <laughs> Peter Cushing, ask the doctor. Uh, yeah. uh, so we watched that Oh, I, you know what I'd like to see from the 50s? Not necessarily even with the show. I would like to see some recognition for first of fatal death. Um, uh, with, you know, and Moffat Moff wrote it, um, and I don't know. If you're familiar with this or not, it was in 1999, Moffat for a, the charity was it the Red Nose? I think they called Red Nose at that point. It wasn't called Red Nose at the time. Uh, he wrote an episode of Doctor Who. Now Doctor Who hadn't been on since the '96 Fox movie, um, yeah. and so he creates this amazing. If you haven't seen it, YouTube, wonderful thing. Um, um, and also, if you're going to be at StellarCon, we're actually going to actually watch the entire Christmas oh. Idol Dad and talk about it. Okay, well, wonderful. You can save till then. It does come to. Checking GPR on the cellar. No, no, GPR is happening. Don't, don't, don't worry. <laughs> GPR is happening. It's happening. <laughs> I, I told you, it's happening. Look, and look at these, look at these eyes. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, um, but um, but what the actually what a lot of people don't realize is um, We're sorry. the importance of Curse of the Fatal Death was. The, the, was that was the start of the researchers of who, because it was the highest rated um, certainly charity event definitely. charity event that they ever had, and it showed them that they could bring it back tomorrow and have the ratings to sustain the show, and they had no idea about that. Um, it's a it's about a twenty minute long parody of the classic who, if you haven't seen it, um, starring. Uh, just a, some amazing talent. It's absolutely worth it. it it's, just, it's just wonderful. Yeah, and the thing is, is I mean, I had no idea about that it wrote it until about a year ago. Yeah. Because I had never seen the behind the scenes, and I had never made connections because it had been a, while, a long time since I watched it. But it's thanks to Stephen Moffat, who now is thankfully in charge of the show, um, we, have, we have it back today. Because they did some web stuff, and then, you know, they did some, a few other little things, and then Davies, you know, brought it back, and, you know, I gotta say this. Um, not only did Whovians get you know Doctor Who back, but we got it back good. Yeah. I mean, it's been absolutely a wonderful ride since it's come back. It has. It has. And the, the fact that it's it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily mainstream in America yet, but it's getting there. That's well, that's just, a pretty impressive. Just the fact that BBC is willing to fly them over a couple times a year now, where they wouldn't let Tenant come over at all. I mean, says a lot. I mean, they realize there's the fandom. Because I want my freaking dialect Easter eggs that they have over in England. Oh, wow. They, you should see the they, Easter projects. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have so much awesome Doctor Who stuff over there. Doctor Who Easter baskets, Doctor Who Valentines, which those at state actually get a Doctor Who Valentine from us to you. <laughs> uh, so all those people that left, you know. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, I mean, how much more time do we have? Uh, well, time are we supposed to be going on till? Uh, I don't know. One thirty. It's, it's quarter after one, so we have fifteen minutes. Do you want to say anything? Why you like who? Anything? Anything you want to say on the fiftieth anniversary? Um, I'm curious why you guys don't like this. I like. I like. Okay. Eccleston. I. That's my first thought. Okay. This is this is what this is what I say about Eccleston. I think they needed Eccleston to kick it off. They needed somebody like Eccleston to bring it back. That would be that people would relate to. Don't get me wrong, I, I liked Eccleston when I first saw him, but then when I get these wonderful things with Tennant and then Smith, and then I hear some of the behind the scenes stuff from Eccleston, where he says he'll never ever do Who again, he won't come back for the 50th. It reminds me a lot of what Baker did back in the day. I never want to touch Who again, I never want to see it, and if you see some of the classic 
Baker interviews. No, no, let's, 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 let's put the Baker interviews out. Tom. Tom. Okay. Tom Baker, the star of Scarfman. He is the biggest pompous asshole <laughs> you ever see, that ever had the part. I assume now that Tom Baker will not be coming for a special edition <laughs> of Cal Trek Wolf Train. But honestly, I would like to see his, his retrospective now because he's actually liking who again. Yeah. He's having the, the time of his he's life bored. doing the, um, the big Finnish audios. Um, and I think he is game for the 50th anniversary now where he would not touch the five doctors with the 10 foot pole back in the day because he was afraid to be a tie cap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was uh, in, in the boat. <laughs> do you think yeah. they'll try to do that for the 50th? Bring some of the old doctors back? Oh, no. Um, this, I mean, not to be picky, but they're all in worse shape than me. Okay. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is what I, this is what I know. They have contacted everybody. I mean, from from ones that were concert companions to the to the actor, the actors that have played the doctor, they have all been talked to. What that means, I mean, it could be something as a cameo in the background. It could be them, you know, taking the role back. You know, we don't know. All we know is that everybody has been has been spoken to, and there was a lot of confidentiality forms that are being thrown. Around, but I think a lot of it's been like, would you be interested in coming back for something? Um, because we know that Sophie Aldrin was going to come back for the Sarah Jane Smith That's Adventures, true. but because Liz died, um, and now that's something I would like to see not next season but the 50th is a nod to Liz, like they did with with uh, the Courtney, Brigadier, yeah. which was I thought Courtney got the end short in the sick where you know we didn't get this retrospect you know, about about the Brigadier, but the way Moffat worked that in. To you know, essentially last minute too. Yeah, I mean that was just like I want something like that for Liz. It was a really powerful scene, I think. It was. I mean, like you said, the doctor is learns and grows when somebody he cares about dies. And that seems to be the only time he can talk too, yeah. really. But you know, the, the physicality of the actors doesn't matter because if the horrible remake of Tron has taught us anything, you can make Jeff Bridges look twenty years old again. You can make Tim and digitize his face and make him look like the way he was when he came on. Maybe that's Alan Rickman and uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, we could get all the old doctors or well, okay. the digital images I mean, and put them in the episode. Look, I'll so say this. I mean, it's so incredible. We don't know that they're fake. Or I, was saying, I mean, I think Davidson pulled it off. Colin cannot. McCoy could. Um, McGann yeah. definitely could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, and they've already said that they're not going to, you know, hire actors to do, you know, oh. Hartnell, um, Kirkley, or um, Trouton. Though they have said they might ask the sons, because I mean, Kirkley's son was just in the, the TV show Camelot, and he looks, he, you know, they will big on him. I think he can pull it off. I haven't seen Trouton's son, but from what I hear, he looks a lot like his father as well. And I think that would be the only way that you could get away with that. Same thing with like the doctor's daughter. I don't think anybody could have played that part and got away with it if they were not literally the doctor's daughter. I mean, that was Peter Davison's daughter. I mean, you need something like that in order to pull it off. It's almost like a royal bloodline of like people who are in Doctor Who and now they're like, must track them down. You know, I'm really, them. you know, I'm really surprised none of them have been knighted. Oh, that's interesting. I would like to see about it. <laughs> I, I, you know, along with that. I would also like to see a nod to not just the actors, but also um, the, the directors and uh, producers and some of the people who made Doctor Who successful at the beginning. Um, just kind of, maybe even the writers would be great. Uh, you know, Karen Stick, put Darren Sticks in the background and, and put a funny hat on or something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but don't go the Stanley way, because I, I really, I'm really starting to get annoyed by Stanley in, in, the, in the superhero movies. Well, we only have to see them once, not in every single episode. Yeah. But, but no, it, I mean, be, it would be like nice to bring them in. Yeah. They're yeah. willing they're to come in for every oh, single DVD yeah. release to, yeah. to come in there and talk about it. Um, and, and I don't know what Barry Letts is doing with his time other than doing those DVDs. And, and no offense to Barry Letts, I'm just saying that it's wonderful to have the producers being able to come in here and talk like that, Tim's Cliff and, and, and such, come in and, and talk about their time. Yeah. Yeah. On, on screen in the show that they they worked on for so long. And one thing one thing I'll bring up because uh, we're talking about you know things from the past coming back to play a role in the present. The TARDIS. We still have no idea who or what I should say who blew up the TARDIS still. That is 
And if they follow tradition with the anniversaries, the very first anniversary villain they had was Omega in the Three Doctors. Right around the time they did the ten or the five doctors, not the ten doctors, um, again we get Omega. Yeah. So, and a lot of people had conspiracy see the Omega symbol in the explosion of the TARDIS anyway. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I would really like to see Omega come back. But can you actually see him come back, or can you just see his hat? <laughs> his hood. His hood. Yeah. His, his, whatever his mask. mask. Right the time. But I mean, I, and I think Moffat is that much of a fan to do something like that. Mm. I mean, I could be totally off. I could be totally wrong. I mean, I haven't, you know, I haven't called, you know, Stephen up on the phone lately. Have you looked on the, on the explosion yourself to see if there's the I've, I've, I've looked at the... Or is it like people looking the at the... Like, no, I mean, I've, I've looked... The images I, that's that's more of what I've seen because I've seen the photo and I've seen them circling it. I almost like really that's supposed to be the, the omega symbol. You see them photoshopping the omega symbol. And the omega. Yeah. So I mean, the big arrow. <laughs> so I mean, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what how that's going to come into play because that's the last big question I think that they've not answered yet out of Moffat's run. Who blew up the TARDIS? Who do you think blew up the TARDIS? Oh, and the, the other big question is. Where did the science get the TARDIS? I tell you, you spoil it though. No, but, but I mean... Are we talking the, the, the not the Doctor's TARDIS, but the, the, the TARDIS the, from the, 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 the Lodger? The, the Lodger TARDIS, yeah, which, right. strangely enough, I would say could be one, one or two TARDISes, because we still don't know what happened to the Master's TARDIS with the Time War and his escape. We, That's true. And the, the, the master did have a tendency to make his TARDIS black on the inside and dark and gloomy. Yeah. And they are kind of sarcophagi. Yeah. In, in I, there. I don't think it's the master's TARDIS because it really looks like it's cobbled together from spare parts by it's someone. It's the TARDIS graveyard. Yeah. 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 How they it's get more there? that sort of vibe than yeah, totally something that <laughs> is actually. Tiny, my but I mean, honestly, the, yeah. the question is, is where did the silence get it? Because well, they the, had like it. The doctor the doctor's heart in the episode of The Doctor's Wife, she makes that comment about, I stole you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, it, it does give this hint that, like, the TARDIS isn't just, you know, it's not, it's not a car. Well, it's know? grown. No. Yeah, no, I mean, they actually say, like, again, in, in the TARDIS handbook, <laughs> they talk about it. Um, you know, the, some, some of the old TARDISes, I mean, were somewhat set in it. I mean, they are a living machine. And Maybe that was more to go hang out. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, even if, if it's the Ronnie's TARDIS or the Rainy's TARDIS, no, I, I mean, I don't think it's a proper TARDIS. I think it's something. You think it's like a. It's. it's a, yeah, but no, yeah. the problem is it's, it's, a, it's bigger on the inside, though. But the other thing is. How does the sound figure out how you build it? No, that's the thing. Silence doesn't build anything. So. Yeah. They, they would have gotten got yeah. someone else to do it. And it's not like, you know. So if someone else put together a TARDIS. Well, I mean, yeah. the, well, the Time Lords are not careful with their TARDISes in the least. They're not like, careful people. Like, <laughs> careful is not one of their big fangs. Yeah, their well, main mode of transportation is something that can destroy the universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, here's the thing. When you're dealing with the time machine, it's not like they have to get it from the past. You know, they can get it from the future. It's a time machine. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> they use their time machine to go to the future, future to get a time machine, machine to go back. <laughs> what? And, and uh, uh, ah. <laughs> I mean, really look, I, mean, look, I mean, look at War Games. I mean, look how many TARDISes they had in that one. No, they didn't. They were they time boxes. They had a art. It was a Sid rat. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, a, it was the latest model. Sure. Um, well, The yeah. latest model of a time machine. Well, I mean, <laughs> even when you took it, it was at the museum. It was, it was basically being decommissioned. It was a Type 40. He did. It's not, it's not a museum. It's a museum, retirement. She ran away with it. Okay, well, how it's about this then? Home. It's, reti it's a retirement home. They, by their very nature, have a chameleon circuit. So how do we even know it's the doctor's TARDIS that's blowing up? Could it not be somebody else's that's looking like the doctor's? No. Man, he would know his own TARDIS. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did the, the finale for the last episode not end with, wait, does everybody know how the last episode ended? Oh, no, 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 never mind. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not speaking. Oh, but let's, for okay. those of you who do know, let's, let's see what all our conspiracy theories said. And then, I'm kind of curious. I mean, <laughs> What, what are your Spoilers. feelings to it? 
Don't spoil anything for someone who hasn't seen it. Look, there's a video. Open. Have you watched any part of uh, season six? No, uh, that's where I'm up to. Okay. Okay. But I'm Stuff happens. Season six. Stuff happens. <laughs> and we have to wait for the entire season to figure out did it really happen or did it not happen? And how is the doctor going to get out of that? And when you find out how the doctor got out of it, oh, oh, I know it's so to. much different from all the wonderful things that we're spouting on the internet, these yeah. intricate conspiracies, and they're like, oh, wait, that, okay. So it doesn't, oh, I know the doctor has saying. proven that it doesn't have to be an overly complicated history laden. Yeah, but the thing is, but he did say, no, he did say, I, I know the sound anywhere. He knew that was his TARDIS. He yeah. did say that. Like your dog barks when your car comes down the street. It doesn't bark at every car. Yeah, no, no, he said, because, I mean, because. You know what your wife's Because that's the end of, oh, what, season awesome. five. I mean, he said, you know, Rory heard it, and, you know, the doctor said that was his. Mm. Okay. And, and, you know, plus trust he, the plastic. Yeah, trust the plastic. Yeah. I think pretty And do you know that, you know, the TARDIS sound is actually, um, isn't classified as a sound effect, it's actually classified as a piece of music? And that's why the sound is actually copyrighted, yeah, and nobody else really? can use it. Wow. Yeah. Ah. They they purposely what because they, they take a key and scratch a piano. Yeah. No. yeah. Huh. And, probably, and they probably do a little bit of distortion, but that's like the basic. Sound. But but the original the original there was no distortion. It was just that. Um, and because they used a musical instrument on it, they were able to to get it copyrighted as a piece of music, so no one else can use it. That's that awesome. Funny. I like that. Song. Yeah. And, and, they're, and they're very protective of, of the sound. Mm -hmm. um, they're less protective of the image of the TARDIS, <laughs> though they, they, they will get they will get on some people about it if they do anything to it. Yeah, but so the sound is going to go up, and like some of the BBC is going to be like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> <laughs> In the UK, they have a, they they have a series of portajons called the TARDIS portajon. Um, <laughs> is it bigger than you know? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my drinking mug; it never empties. Here's the way, here's the way I look at. It. Down notice, so that means we have one more viewer than I thought we did. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, are, we have an extreme viewership yeah. in Poland. Uh, Poland. Uh, Poland. Poland loves us. Yes, Thank you, Poland. Poland. Oh, yeah, the, the, the United States. How did you find this? I think I think United States, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Spain, Arabia? UK, Poland are our top five viewerships. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. wait, who has friends or family in Poland? Because that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I can't, Honestly, I can't figure out Poland. I mean, I understand Saudi Arabia because of the trip station there. Maybe, because I, I do know some people in the military. But I don't, I don't get Spain, and I don't get Poland. Well, I've got, we are the I've United States. States. We do have bases kind of everywhere. So, but Poland? Know. We have bases in Poland. Do we, have, do we have military bases in Poland? Oh, Does yes. anybody know? Yes, of course we do. But it's yeah, Poland. Poland. Why? If you happen to be on a military base in Poland, please write us. At yes. <laughs> if you're in Poland, Washington, is here. Yeah, yeah, everyone is here for the next but panel. We're really yeah. here. We're talking about military bases in Poland. Do they exist? Do they not exist? <laughs> do you care? Well, I think, I think it's a little wobbly, yeah. wobbly, timey wobbly. Well, actually, we're pretty good until they throw at okay, least this actually us in the future. Because the two of us have to save the next panel. What is the next panel? It's like the, the all guest panel. Oh, oh okay. Later. It's for us non important. So, um, yeah. do you have any final party words for our, our, our doctor our, our doctor fans of Poland? <laughs> Does anybody know any Polish words? I know. I'm, how do you say doctor who? Now would be a great time to be able to say no in Polish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, is it? That's racist. Are racist to it? it? <laughs> so, no, um, is pretty racist too. <laughs> kibasa, is, kibasa is yummy. Kibasa is yummy. I can use some kibasa right about, about now. I want some kibasa. Fans. Who wants some kibasa? Uh, Listen, if there are any Dr. Who fans yes. in Ethiopia, please <laughs> open a restaurant <laughs> in Greensboro. Please. 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 <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want some kibasa now. Are we still on farting words? Party yeah. 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, I gotta say, this this panel was done better than the Logicon. <laughs> yeah. The Logicon was fine. We talked about Amy Pond Grayson the entire time. Oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can find that in the archives. In the archives. Yes, in the archives. Yes, it, 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 Man, it's I know, Amy's like, so what would you guys like to see in the next ever, like, two Amy Ponds? 
Well, we've seen yeah, 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 you saw the three baby pods. Oh. oh, and let me tell you. And they need to be washing the tardis. I, I, have, like, little <laughs> or I don't know what so six people of all the Amy British Pond. are when they make their toys. Amy Pond toys do not have underwear. Yeah. Now, I have to ask. Which explains what happens in time and, in time and space now. Why Rory screwed up the TARDIS when he looked up through the glass doors <laughs> in the control room? <laughs> I would have the same problem. I'm just curious how many of Damien's toys he's checked to make sure he's not just Amy Ponds. Davey checks all of his Doctor Who stuff to see no. if he has underwear. He no. does no. ask who's like, just in case you're No one in the Just like Tardis. Probably should have a diaper. But, uh, I mean, it's yeah. just like Donald Duck. Ah! <laughs> don't blink. Oh, yes. I like her. Yes. Don't look away. Damn it, I just put it in his pocket. You looked away. Oh, <laughs> Please don't send me to the 50s. I like her. You would conquer the 50s. Uh, yeah, you would be arrested. You would conquer the 50s. It's <laughs> <laughs> got a video camera. Wait. <laughs> The devil people send Allegra back to the 50s. Guys, what is wrong? That's a graphic novel. Oh, that's totally a graphic What's novel. For us? That's, a that's for the graphic next. novel. But wait, we, we, we gotta end this novel. panel. Yes. So any final Doctor Who words, inspiration, anything that you want to say? Dear be TARDIS forever! Get on the top of that. That's it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so very sorry. But not really. Stephen Moffat, if you're watching, <laughs> you can call both of us. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could get Cornell on the phone if we wanted to. Right now. Yeah. Do it. I don't have my phone. My phone's gone. Someone give him a phone. Someone give him a phone. Panel's over. Yeah, the panel's over. <laughs> over. Sorry. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, you know what we, might, what we might want to do? What? Honestly. For Stellar, so since somebody's um, totally not yeah, right. being nice to us, and won't let us show Curse of the Third or Death now because we don't get the time slot, you know, Wait, I, I, should, the, I should actually what? I should actually email Cornell to see if I can't get Cornell on the panel. Right. Will you put like a little computer there so it will like turn the screen? Honestly, I'm gonna I'll, when we get back to the room, I'm gonna go ahead and email Cornell. Absolutely. Oh, that, that would not. Oh, no. okay. I am seething. Seething. Jealousy right now. Well, yeah, you're not going to be in town for Stella? No. Well, I'll be there. I'm just the fact that you have access to Cornell. It's, uh... Yeah, I have access to Cornell. And he, and he loves Doctor Who fandom, which is the, even that much better. Because he actually wrote the one the one blog. Uh, I forget what it's called, but he basically wrote what? Well, that too. But, I mean, no, he actually does the one where they bring all the doctors together. Oh, okay. At that gotcha. point. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, which explains the, the second doctor uh, theory about the two doctors, about the conspiracy theory there, um, and all the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm, I'm going back. We're gonna go back. We're gonna we're gonna compose a letter to Cornell. Okay. Well, actually, we join yeah, us next we time. We have to if This plan succeeds or fails. It goes horribly awry. And actually, right, it's four minutes over. And actually, the, 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 the interesting thing is, is that we are actually celebrating coming up on our one year anniversary, and we're actually coming up to our 50th episode, which we actually do have some stuff, some stuff, stuff planned just for Silicon for this. Yeah. Yes, we do. High five. Of course we do. Yo, yeah, okay. you haven't seen what I made yet. No, I don't. Oh, and anybody that's actually made it through the panel, which is a small group of people, and anybody else who's now in here, we actually have Doctor Who Valentine's for you. Because we love you. Aww. Yes. Aww. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. So, yeah. this is Grail, Queen Priority Radio, signing off finally. Though I'm kind of wondering where all the guests for the guests of the guests all panel are. Uh, it doesn't start for 25 minutes. But wait, really? Because it said uh, no, no, it starts now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was back to back. I thought we did. All right, everyone, go get your Valentine. Yeah, no. Oh wait, holy shit! We're supposed to go to two o'clock. What? Yeah. <laughs> wait, what? Okay. We're supposed to go to two o'clock. No, I had no idea. That was an hour. Oh. This is an hour and a half. All right, so, so, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, edit out this uh, hey, no, this part we, where we look like assholes. <laughs> we never edit like, GPR. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really. If you're just joining us, we're just talking about our favorite doctors. Uh, <laughs> just cut that bit out. No, I, like, um, honestly, um, let me put this out to the 
audience, the focus of audience participation. Um, obviously, who, who is who was like your first doctor? Who's your favorite doctor? I mean, honestly, I mean, what's some of the stuff? Why do you watch Doctor Who? Help us fill out the remaining thirty minutes that we did not know we had. I'm going to eat my dinner. I really don't actually remember my first doctor. It's been so long. Cool. Uh, this is back when it was still black and white. That I first started watching, and of course, we've lost a lot of that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I missed a lot of Doctor Who. Yeah, I was hungry. I'll pick back up because I really missed the start of Black Out. Probably just the draw of all the sci fi, the adventure, the danger. Well, who's, who's your favorite Doctor now? My favorite? It's a split between Tenet and Smith right now. Cool. Uh, probably closer to Smith than Tenet. Oh, and anyway, I have a question because. My reasons for liking the show were incredibly shallow, but my questions are also incredibly shallow. Who is the sexiest doctor? Oh, ten. Ten. No, no question. No question. <laughs> what? Ten. Season five. <laughs> Season five. Ten. You know, I would have to go. I don't like that. True story. What? True story. I only started watching Doctor Who because I thought ten was hot. Hey, there was a marathon on. You know something? That's America. legit, man. I don't give a damn as long as it. And actually, I want. I want to bring. I want to talk to this. this this guy here. Zero Bryant, this dude is wearing your Whovian shirt. Um, Please stand up and turn around, see? So giving you some giving you some more love because we uh, we heart you, Zero Bryant. Um, Left the shirt. Take it off. Left the shirt here. It says Whovian. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, and it's made up of a bunch of Here you go. Um, I'm going to give this to you, so I'm entitled to a piece of your wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 the leg wrap? Um, no, uh-uh. Oh, no. Uh, she barely uh, has any on as it is. I've got exactly. one. <laughs> Here we go. I'm giving this to you so I can get the coupon back. Here. Uh, I want a piece of your clothing. All right. You know what? <laughs> We're going to fill up these 30 minutes somehow. <laughs> I met on the con circuit, and after our bizarre meeting, which can only be said as bizarre, we become the best, the best of friends. There's a bad feel story behind the show. It was the first time we met, which is not appropriate for the Doctor Who panel or whatever. Because Doctor Who doesn't evolve. It is appropriate yeah. for killing 20 minutes we didn't know we had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like to kill 20 minutes by hearing the story? Okay. Yeah, there's yes. a middle right now. Oh, okay. Well, we have the question for, for, for those of you who are fans, uh, however you became a Who fan, on, and how you introduce people who don't know Doctor Who to Doctor Who. Um, and this is something I've talked to with a, a number of people. That's a lot of Who's. I say, yeah. Dave yeah. is not Who's. Forget sexy. Watch this show. And they do. And, and that works for a number of people. Um, you know, I carried Blink on a, a jump drive for, for two years and said, oh, you can watch Doctor Who. Oh my god, what's wrong with you? Because <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. Why are you guys um, all using no, but stop no, it. And here's the stop thing. It. Stop it. And here's the stop thing it. too. I see you. There's a number of people who, who uh, like for as, as far as the new Q series are concerned, uh, consider uh, oh, obviously Moffat's stuff to be pretty much top of the line. Well, his and Cornell's are the ones that won all the awards. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and now and now we get to add you know Damon. And actually, I, there's still little in this last season that that I I can't, I don't think because they didn't like any of the episodes. But um, there's let's kill that lawyer. I think it was the weakest. Really. Yeah, because the thing, and the reason why I say that, Moffat is so good about setting things up so early on. I mean, hell, we had pictures of the silence in The Beast Below. If you look at some of the drawings, the graffiti, mm -hmm. you see the doctor with his mouth uh, sewn shut. Mm -hmm. um, Mel's came out of nowhere. Mel's was like left field, and I was so surprised by that, because that's not like Moffat to go left field on us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, because, I mean, there would be no, if this is supposed to be somebody that is their lifelong friend, we, we shouldn't just now be being introduced to him in, in the, the middle seconds. of the six Yeah. By the way, we have people in the audience who haven't seen season six. <coughs> um, I don't know why you're talking about it, but anyway. Um, <laughs> they look busy. Just, so I think we're fine. Fingers and ears. Yeah. Um, I know who that was. Okay, well, no, I, I, can, I can see that point. It just, but I, it's <laughs> like they introduced this character lifelong friend. <laughs> You're gonna want to do this, just, just No, we're not, we're not gonna say anything about it. You see this character for the first 
20 minutes of one episode, then this character is never seen or referred to in that sense ever again. I, I mean, yes. honestly, I, I honestly I think he I think he I think that was his big mistake. I think he realizes it. I don't think we're ever gonna hear or see. I'm not gonna confirm nor deny that. Um, but okay, um, who? Because you're a movie, and who's your favorite doctor? Uh, I, I, I don't know if I have a favorite. There's a lot of judgment here. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> don't say Eccleston. <laughs> oh, oh, say no, Eccleston's my favorite. I got your back. Oh. I got your back. Oh, I love Eccleston. He was my first. Um, they called the baker. I have to punch someone in the face today. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't watched any other classics. Dude, it's not it's not Colin's fault. Yeah, and that's oh, actually oh, the point I wanted to, to, to go into with that is you know how much of it is the doctor and how much of it is the the writing. No, it wasn't the writing. It was the BBC trying to kill Doctor Who at the time. Well, yeah. sure, but <laughs> no, there's no sure nor fault. Yeah. It was just so. <laughs> Colin actually has like an idea of I'm gonna start the doctor here, then over these next few seasons I'm gonna progress him to this, but yeah, everybody in the BBC was trying to kill the show. So. And honestly, I mean, I what what I wish would have happened, um, which almost did happen, was Davidson only wanted the three years. But because and he thought the scripts were starting to be really crappy towards the end of his run, but then they got really tight. And it was suggested that he, you know, wanted to do another season, but the only problem was the Harry cast ba of Colin Baker. Because honestly, I think the course of Who might have been a lot different if we never had Colin in there. I mean, we may never have lost it. Because, I mean, Who was actually on an upswing with Sylvester McCoy, but it was too little too late. Um, because honestly, I think I hate to say it, as much as I, I think Colin is, is is a decent actor, I think he got shit to work with because the, the producers hated the show. But I think if we would have somehow gone from Davison to McCoy, I don't know if we ever would have lost who. I mean, it's just one of those things we'll never know. But I, I really have to wonder because I mean, if if you look at the if you look at the best episodes of Basaku, the caves of I can't pronounce them. It is considered one of the best, if not the best, Pasuku story of all times. Again, we're dealing with death and the doctor, a dying companion, where, I mean, everything's at stake. All that's true, though. If you ask most people who know Doctor Who, they'll say, you know, Baker, the guy with the scar. Yeah. I mean, he's still, a, even though everyone is obviously the real fans hate him, that's the one that. No, no. I think Baker was a, a, a decent. A doctor, I think the man is a bastard. <laughs> or he was a bastard. I think what really made those episodes for me was uh, Sarah Jane, really. She's I mean, Sarah Jane, Liz, I love you. I mean, really what did become the quintessential companion. I mean, because she, though at times I think they didn't know what they wanted to do with her, because in the very first time she appeared with, with Pertwee, she thought he was a villain, which I thought was great. Um, that was a phenomenal episode, and I hadn't watched that until she passed. I was able to get my hands on it thanks to iTunes. I watched it that night, and I was a teary mess um, that entire night. Um, but at times, they knew how to write her. I mean, she went from a strong character to a character that was in need to a strong character. You know, you never really knew what to do with her. But overall, she was, I mean, she is the definitive, I think, female companion. I mean, there have been some amazing ones people her and some after, but she stands out in everybody's mind, and she was only there for a very short time, which, and honestly, I think the reason why she is so beloved is actually more thanks to the P PBS, because they would buy blocks of the show, and it seemed like that was the block that everybody bought were the Sarah Jane Smith episodes, not because they really liked her or anything, it's just the block they bought. And those were the episodes that were shown over and over and over again. So that was the companion, the doctor, that most people were exposed to. Besides, you know, they finally did start showing Davison. A lot of um, Colin Baker episodes were not purchased, but then a lot of the Sylvester McCoys were, because you had to buy them in lots. And I think that's the reason why, you know, some people love a, you know, like Baker's, because that's all we really had over here for, for some people, um, which 
good or bad, it doesn't matter because it made him Doctor Who fans. And it made people love Liz Slayton, which I think she is was one of one of the best. And I think she was one of the the the, the shining stars of the Sarah Jane Smith adventures. I mean, B, it was her kids. I mean, she is why I turned in. She was amazing at it to see her be Sarah Jane again and just so be Sarah Jane. Mm. Yeah. And like I said, I hope in the 50th, I don't want it next season in the 50th, they, they, make, they acknowledge her death the way they did uh, the Brigadiers. I teared up at that point. Oh, I got oh, oh, yeah. beepy. I was not coming out of the nose. I mean, <laughs> because in a lot of ways, I think the Brigadier, I mean, the Brigadier and Sarah are are the two that are tied for the most most uh, appearances with the Doctor, and nobody. Well, after the, the the maybe this 50th anniversary, you know, there might be a new tie going on. But I mean, without the anniversary and stuff, they, they were the ones that served with the Doctor and been with more Doctors than anyone else. Well, more Doctors certainly. Well, um, Nicholas Courtney holds the record for the longest time playing the same character on television. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Yeah. He, he, uh, from like second doctor to, I guess, Davis, right? He, he monogrammed. Yeah, yeah, he was a name. Because originally, the weird thing is, is um, originally there, the, the episode that uh, Cordy appears in with uh, Davidson was, that was supposed to be uh, the guy who played Ian Chesterfield. That's the reason why all of a sudden the Brigadier is teaching math at a, um, or history at an old boys school, was originally that was supposed to be uh, the actor who played Ian Chesterfield. But yeah. something happened to stop that, so they got Courtney in instead. Then, then we're going to actually bring in um, uh, Fraser Hines, too. I mean, if, if, if it yeah. wasn't him and he couldn't do it because of contractual work. And then yeah. Um, but I mean, I think it was great. I mean, I think the <coughs> I think a lot of it doesn't just come down to exposure, but also that those are really the first couple of companions where they made a point of having those characters question the Doctor and be right a lot of the time. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I think that's one of the really, it, it adds sort of a, an interesting dynamic instead of just having the Doctor be the outright father figure to the people he's taking around to different places. Oh yeah, I mean, definitely the Brigadier. I mean, he questioned the Doctor all the time. Um, and I know he got annoyed by the doctor always stopping him from shooting the alien. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a beautiful thing because um, the Brigadier really is, is a counterpoint to the doctor in, in many ways. Um, it is the, this, the mode of thinking that the doctor is vehemently against. It, um, take the Doctor Who and the Silurians, the, the very first yeah. one. Um, you know, I'm not going to ruin the ending for you, but I mean, if you really want a good budding of heads, that's an excellent episode to watch. And they were friends in spite of it. That's yeah. Really, you have these scenes where the Doctor and the Brigadier actually hang out outside of adventures. They go and you know, we're going to go to a pub. But also, there's and, there's also a third component to all that, because I think it it itself is its own character, the ever moving mustache. <laughs> because actually, if you, if you watch if you watch the Brigadier and, and half the fun of this is he he didn't he didn't have a mustache. Um, it was a fake mustache, <laughs> and he right before filming any scene he would just slap it on, <laughs> and. He would go, I mean, it was ever moving on his face. Sometimes it would be like this, this, straight. I mean, you never knew what was going to happen with the mustache next. Yeah, so much. It had to go off and have its own adventure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, he did it in Inferno. Maybe it'll be the Oh game. my god, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Fantastic, yes. This, it's like, the, lose, lose a mustache. Yes, you know what? Okay, yeah. okay, I know what we're going to do next time we sit down and watch Classic Who. <laughs> mustache is on straight. There drink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> two drinks. In, two drinks if it's to the right. Half a drink if it's to the left. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh, but we wow. can't do that with Inferno. <laughs> <'cause there> is, <laughs> well, you can. You can. It's just um. You'd stay sober. Yeah. <laughs> That's no fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and hence the reason why we have the explicit tag, and iTunes still won't take us. But it doesn't matter because we're number five in Poland. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> iTunes won't take us. <laughs> no, because we can't, we can't figure it out. We need to have to move the whole date. But it doesn't matter because we're. You know, like the second episode, the, the first or second episode that I did with you, like yeah. the whole thing is just like cuss words, like every fourth <laughs> word. And we we're like, you're going to censor this afterwards. And you're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not wearing clothes during that episode. Check the article. No, actually, te 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 episode, technically yeah. she is not. She's just wearing a scarf. <laughs> there is a giant did, did you leave in that? Did you leave in that one episode where the camera was running a little too long and then I think 
I was the one who made a reference to the Razor dildo from the 70s, and oh. then you just said, yeah, sure, we can keep that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that probably stayed in there. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, now with that reference, so people are going to go back now, hopefully, Check and try to figure out what episode that was to figure out the context of Seven and Doctor Who. Warheads. Like one, and it's going to be like that creepy pervy guy. <laughs> see, we're, we're, see, I really only plan for an hour, because normally it is only an hour. We can sing Kumbaya. No. We can, we can all harmonize with Dr. Who. <laughs> <laughs> that don't go so well last time. It was right. beautiful. What were you talking about? It was not. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, okay, how many sober people were on that panel? Negative. Oh, actually, no, I was sober. Yeah, I was too. Uh, kind of Angela was sober. Jason was drunk enough for like three people. Rich was sober. Jason, Jason was the only one drinking on that last channel. I thought Rich was. No, we did a panel no. on the logic. Oh, that one. And yeah, sure. that was the one where we were discussing Amy Pond threesomes the entire time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah that's what you can't sit together anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are getting disciplined. Oh. Speaking of discipline, Amy Pond threesomes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So honestly, um, why why are some of you guys out there? Fans. I mean, why, I mean, what what about the show brings you? Because we'll try to actually bring this back to Doctor Who, and that's just rambling. Um, of course, we They're also, the ones who gave us an hour and a half to ramble. And I told them an hour. So I mean, honestly, well, I mean, what, what we, we heard from? Uh, are, you, are you supposed to be Django or just Amanda? I can't tell. Just Amanda. Thank thank God they don't have the cage. Yeah, you would be in that. You would be in it. I got I, I got a hundred bucks. I got a hundred bucks. It says you're gonna be there longer. No, you're going. Those of you who have no idea what we're talking about. I got to give you a rest of that adventure. It was fun. We, we, we bounty hunted uh, Khan. Yeah. Oh no, I know what you're talking about. They raised money for people in Poland, probably. <laughs> <laughs> or or they Saudi Arabia. Right. Put on yeah. your helmet, walk in front of the camera so the people in Poland can see he's a bounty hunter. He goes to Khan's. He, people pay him to arrest people. I slipped them an extra five sticks. sticks. He's tardis blue. Yeah. Tardis blue. Yeah. Very appropriate. Yes. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Shake your fist menacingly at the camera. Yes. There we go. <laughs> and then you, you pay him money, and he find he bounty hunts somebody. We put well, him in the cage. They put her same money for him. Oh my money God. Goes to oh. No. I mean, hey, look, we just <laughs> lost all the viewers. Should have been the Mistake, and you've been in the last hour and a half. I'm really, surprised. You need to go out and 
make some more friends. <laughs> I'm surprised we he's available. He's on have. Facebook. <laughs> oh, thank well, God. More people for another panel. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> no, baby. I'm here to see the, the rest of you. So. I mean, so I, how much longer do we actually have? Kind of we have here. four minutes and thirty yeah. seconds. Yes! All right, we can kill this shit. I mean, I, I, no, what are we age? We can talk about dogs. Hey, yeah. people in the audience, do you have any okay, questions for us? Right. We might not be able to answer them, but I'll, I'll answer them. I mean, okay. I'll the right answer. <laughs> What's the square root of pi? Five. Okay, next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> how many doctors have there been? Oh. Okay. Um, that's actually a really interesting question. Uh, and we are talking about the doctor. <laughs> um, because honestly, now that Moffat has said that it's um, everything's canon, does that mean the seventeen BBC animated no. was canon too? Are we talking about uh, just television, movies, comic books? You you would have to you, you actually have to consider it all now because those lost years when we had no who um, after the TV movie. That is all considered canon, and those were actual adventures. Because what a lot of people don't realize, which, which I like talking about because I just found this out myself, was the original plan was that in the comic book, the McGann Doctor was going to regenerate into Eccleston. But the problem was, is there was no way of simultaneously releasing the comic and the episode. Because they didn't want to show the regener regeneration beforehand, they didn't want to show the regeneration afterhand. Um, so, they wanted to, you know, keep that. Plus, it's it's kind of insinuated that um, stuff happens to Eccleston. There's a, quite a bit of yeah. stuff that happened with the Eccleston's doctor. And I, well, I don't know. I kind of feel that all that I think all the time war stuff actually happened with Magan, mm -hmm. yeah. and that Eccleston was the new regeneration yeah, from that. In the first episode, he's still yeah. checking his reflection. Yeah, like he does yeah. his ears for the first time. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, that's that's. <laughs> Those are pretty epic ears. Man. Yeah. 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 Because I mean, he, he doesn't seem like a guy that you know had been through all this war yet. I mean, I mean, he, he was the after effect of the war. He's so angry. He was he's very, very angry. So angry. But Hashtag. I will say, but I will say, <laughs> well, I, I think you know who you're. <laughs> but I, I will, I will say that I think my favorite episode was the, the first dialog episode of the episode stuff. I, if we look at his oh. run, yeah, that's my that's my favorite episode because we got a classic Cyberman in that episode. Yeah, I'll never say it right. No, I, I'm asking yeah. you because the episode was in fact called. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I was going to say yes, yes, because yes, I knew, yeah. Okay. But I mean, yeah. that was a great episode. I, you know, it's it's funny. Um, I, I will openly admit that I kind of cried twice in that first season um, with Dalek and um, that was, yeah, that was with uh, Father's Day. I thought those were very, and, and I I thought they were very fun, sentimental episodes. I haven't gone back and watched them since 2005, but um, I'm a big soft. So okay, um. Some, some more time, like we could kill. Who's your favorite companion? Out of New Who. We'll, we'll start oh, with New Who. <laughs> yes! Now, you're, 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 gonna, you're gonna fall into the, the Davy trap is how do you justify that as a companion? No. He got you left around and his life is dangerous. Uh, Look, I'll tell you, if, if we see Storm again again, I want to see Doctor Who do Lone Wolf and Cub. With um, him running around. I honestly, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I don't have to say this, I really think we're going to see. I think we're gonna see Stormy again, see and I think we're gonna, gonna see him 50th. I have a real sneaking suspicion we're gonna see him 50th. No, hey, Storm again grows up to become Dobrus. No! <laughs> no! You, you, you shut your mouth. You shut your bio. Oh my god. No. Wow. There's a question. Oh, yes, yes. back. Uh, have y'all heard any talk if there's ever been consideration, and maybe this question's already been answered, about bringing the doctor's daughter do you mean Jenny? Jenny. Okay. Yeah. Um, Funny you should mention we, that. We, we, we did talk about that. Okay. Originally, Davies wanted to kill the character off, and she was supposed to die at the end of the show. But Moffat was the one that said, you can't kill her, I want to use her. Um, I think the real reason why we haven't seen her so far, this is a recap for all you guys in Poland. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? I mean, nice, I'm just recapping. Okay, Spain, UK, United States, and Saudi Arabia. We're recapping this. Um, I think because of her courtship with Tennant, um, the pregnancy and the marriage, she just hasn't had the time to come back to, to do it. By the way, yeah. best doc, best companion. I hate you. There's no. You just be quiet. Richard Milhouse. Nixon. I hate you. <laughs> no. 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 Clayton, well, he did travel in the TARDIS. Yes. Yes or no? Female doctor. 
No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Why not? Yes. No. If I may. Yes. Why not? Uh, we, the, obviously, the doctor lies. Um, and it's, it's been said several times that the women are only going to 13 generations. And I'm assuming that they're going to eventually bust that because it's such what, a cash cow at this point. In what, time. No, 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 no. What five doctors, they said they could restore regeneration. So it, it's always been moved on since the five doctors. OK, there okay. we go. Um, the, if we were 11 to the, the 13, no. If, if so, I wouldn't mind, certainly. Because no, well, first so yeah. briefly. No, yeah. that I, I, well, yeah. Corsair, yeah, okay, yes, we should read are we done? Okay, okay, I'm yeah. just slashing yeah. on that. Well, no, 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 hold on, it I, is canon because Davy yeah. said the curse of fatal death was canon, right? Or no, 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 no that wasn't. Uh, so, the guest house will be starting at 2 p.m., please. Yes, so yes. I know you talked about that you can't go to an empty room, there are several in the building, <laughs> but we should probably. Where were you five minutes ago? <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see, then you asked an awesome question. How dare you? Um, 